Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangle. Let's delve a little deeper. So we worked a lot with uh, organic elements. Um, so basically, nature, nature sounds uh, mm-hmm. integrated in the in the mu- musical arrangement. So when you hear it, you can also hear some kind of uh, nature element to the sound um, combined with this uh, melodic hook. So yeah, we could start by by just hearing the the, the sonic logo. I think. So I notice when I'm hearing this, like you were saying, that there is a um, a sound element and a music element. Yeah. So and and the sound is that all nature, or is there more in it than just nature sounds? Uh, that there's definitely more more to it than just that, and and I'm glad you mentioned this blend of of musical elements and sound design elements. Um, mm-hmm. And then there's also an important element to it. That's the the rhythmic uh, structure it has. So if we take away the melodic elements and we take away the the sound designed nature elements, then we actually are left, are left with um, a rhythmic figure. So a, a percussive little um, yeah a little beat basically that is also that little part is also recognizable, I think, and could also work as a as a standalone. Um, mm-hmm. So the whole idea of of uh, you know call it smashable design, so you can take things apart and they will still be um, recognizable uh, on on their own. And what's interesting about this project is that we took this was kind of the the, the, the centerpiece, so the the DNA string of their sonic identity, this little, uh, this logo sound you heard. And then they wanted to implement it in their, uh, in the user experience. So in their mobile app later on. And when you mm-hmm. work on, um, on mobile applications, you have some restrictions uh, when it comes to the, um, the performance of the speaker. You know, they just, uh, the range is just super, uh, limited and so on. So you need to to design the whole sound in another way. It cannot be so full spectrum. It needs to be much more, um, yeah, clean and simple, basically, in order to mm-hmm. to play well on on small speakers. So, and then there's also the the matter of of uh, length. So when you are on a mobile phone, you want something that goes really really fast because you don't have time to to listening to to something that just takes up too much of your time. And that's why the, the text uh, message sounds and all that is basically just a ding or something. So we tried to uh, convert the, the Sonic logo into a small uh, UX uh, UI sound. And I think we have a, an example of that, how the, how the, um, the app sound turned out. Yeah, it's really interesting when you're designing for different hearing experiences. Mm. So, um, like every brand is going to have many different touch points. And so it really depends on where those touch points are. Like if they're on your phone Mm. or if you're on hold, because if you're on hold, Mm. you're listening to stuff at like 8-bit, right? Like it's it's pretty awful. (laughs) Like U-Law is awful. It's uh, It's just horrible. It hurts. It hurts so much. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but uh, but still, I think that the on hold situation is super uh, neglected uh, and and uh, under prioritized the touch points because you actually have your customers right there. I mean, they are mm-hmm. they are listening. <laughs> they are just waiting for for something, and they could be very frustrated at that. Yeah, moment. you can. You, that's, <laughs> but that's that's a good point because you can only. They are already frustrated, so so I mean it it can't go any worse. It can only get better. 
<laughs> that's you can only true, but yeah. <laughs> surprise in a, in a positive way. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, you can also probably surprise in a negative way, but then you, you've already lost. So, so, so true. So for the brand to actually make it surprisingly pleasant, um, and it's it's uh, we, we've we've done some projects where it's it was just amazing to see those uh, test results afterwards. You know what what difference it actually made because people were just they had so low expectations. Um, and you know, when you're, when you're on hold, you're waiting and you think that everything just goes so super slow. But what music can actually do is that it can change the perceived um, length experience, you know, that you actually can make people, give the impression to people that, that time goes much faster. Um, Very true. And you can yeah. actually put in some markers where you indicate that you are, you know, you're getting really close now, like, like and you uh, intensify it and you get really, really close. So people feel that it's, 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 it's constantly progressing. So it's not just um, standing still. It's, it's like I'm, I'm getting closer and closer and closer. So using music, uh, that, that, that's also, uh, that's also, user experience that's also that's also ux design because you need to to kind of manipulate um how the sound and music is perceived because then it, that will also change the impression of the of the waiting time uh, so that's another yeah great example of of these these different touch points where a design mindset uh, is super helpful yeah yeah Definitely. It's, yeah, it's really interesting to me to, to hear about and understand how our brains work on sound. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and yeah, I think I've, I, I talked to, um, Valentin Fleur from, uh, Cesium Song mm -hmm. not too long ago. Mm -hmm. They did something for Interac, which is, a a, um, a debit card thing yeah. here in, in mm -hmm. Canada. And, uh, they actually gave people music to listen to while they were shopping because this particular music made them consider more what they were spending their money yeah. on. So it, it, it didn't actually make them buy more. It made them be happier with their purchases because they were paying more attention yes. to what they were buying, yeah. which was a really <laughs> fascinating project. And it's interesting to see mm. how that does with our brains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was a, uh... It made people more considerate uh, and not just going on a shopping rant. Uh, <laughs> well, I think that the deal there was that people are happier when they're listening to major keys mm. and they are paying more attention when the beats shift. Mm. So when there's movement in the music, when you have to pay attention to yeah. it, then you're paying attention to your surroundings. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's just mm. it's funny how our brains work with all of this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like even user experience would affect how we experience taste. Like, there's lots of experiments that have been going on. Mm. I know uh, Steve Kelly yeah, yeah, talks yeah, yeah. about this all the time. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, that's 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 just a whole new uh, world yeah. opening up. How, how how sound can reflect. A sweet taste or a sour taste uh, mm -hmm. and all that's that's uh yeah that's that's pretty pretty mind-blowing um yeah it's really amazing uh so there are um there's another project that you did for the danish broadcasting mm -hmm. corporation is that yeah. how, what's the the name of that yeah it's uh i mean it, it's basically like the BBC and the CBC. It's and, the Danish yeah, equivalent to, to, to BBC, uh, as, as many yeah. probably know from, from the UK. So it's the Danish national broadcasting company um, called okay. Denmark's Radio. So we basically just call them DR. That's, uh, that's, oh, okay. that's, that's the name. And um, so how many touch points did you make for them? I mean, that's just there was just there's, there's, there's so many uh, and 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 <laughs> yeah. a, and it's a project that is ongoing so we've been working with them for for i don't know 2 3 years now so it's mm -hmm. just an and 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 it keeps evolving and i think that's an important point to make that you cannot you cannot create a sonic identity for anybody just as one 
uh, as, as one project because it's it's like you you you, you create some some basic stuff uh, some essential uh, th things but then you have to use them you have to uh, you know test them uh, get the feedback and you know it's 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 always evolving because then the the the, the company might uh, also move in a new direction so mm -hmm. you need to uh, adapt the the sonic identity to to something new so it's and for, for for dr it's it's just been a constant development i think so we started um with some some key uh, assets uh, that we created for them but over time it has just uh grown rapidly <laughs> almost because some some then then they have some new um maybe a new uh, channel coming or a new show coming or a new online platform coming uh, or a new application coming and and every time this happens they they need a um an ad adaptation of the sound they need they need something that is unique for this specific thing but still related to the to the to the mother brand uh, so to speak so the the touch points we we worked on for for them started with with their the media brands so the tv network um you know the the items for for all the, the tv channels um and then it like like everybody else they also in, in the middle of a digital transformation so they move the focus from uh, old school flow tv into their um, the digital platforms and the streaming services they have and so on and and we are kind of part of that um, process with them so converting the the sound for for tv into a more uh, streaming uh, oriented um, scenario i would say that's 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 the, the journey we are taking with them uh, right now but it all stems from the same dna that we uh, develop with them so i think that that's why it's a powerful uh, example of of sonic branding because we we managed to actually find and establish a really strong um uh key uh key sound i would call it and, and now everything we do and everything they do from from here on it all points back to that that same uh, starting point so that's why i like to call it just a dna string because that's that's actually what it yeah. is um so so even though they they do, do a lot of stuff that is super different and you know depending on if it's sports or news or kids or entertainment or whatever it's it all you can you can always hear that it's that it's um, within the same family um yeah so, so I, I think we can hear how the 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 main sound uh, is the the master brand so it's kind of the 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 umbrella on top of everything um and it's yeah it's um it's a little simple uh logo sound uh just a two note piece um and we took a lot of um inspiration from the legacy of of dr because it's uh, it's uh it's more than 100 years old and uh really has a lot of history um especially when it comes to the danish music tradition they also mm -hmm. have a symphony orchestra and a concert house and all these things so there was a lot of um there was a lot of legacy to to kind of take uh, into account and and put into this sound so it also has some kind of classical traditional elements to it um played on a piano and so on um and of course there is there are sounds in there as well too are are there yeah there are like as not just the music is what i'm saying yeah there are some some we call them textures uh textual layers yes. to it so to so just give it some some put it into a bigger space um i think a a, a company like dr which i mean they're target group 
is the whole of Denmark. So it's, you know, it's from the smallest child to the oldest person in the country. They all, on a daily basis, more or less, are um, interacting with DR, either on TV, on their smartphone, on radio, on online, and so on. So it's kind of like we need to be able to, this sound should be so universal for the uh, Danish population. Um, and therefore, it also needs to to be quite, um, yeah, quite big, I would say, um, because we, we kind of need to get that feeling of of uh, we are we are embracing everybody. Um, so yeah, that, there are more to it than just the the, the piano notes, uh, and there's also some some low end, some really uh, a deep kick to to kind mm -hmm. of uh, just ground everything and then there's a on the other s side of the coin you have the the high-end um stuff to to kind of point more towards yeah the sky yeah i really I, i'm loving these sounds because they're just they're they're very distinctive mm. and they're very um evocative mm. i guess they kind of, they definitely bring something to mind. There's an emotion behind them. Yeah. So I, I definitely appreciate how that is built. And, uh, and it sounds like it's built in, in pieces, like in, you know, there's, there's stepping stones to the layers that are involved in this. It's, it's definitely layered. Um, and I would say these sonic logos is by far the most difficult thing to make. For people like us, um, well, you just have so small a time to put it all together. <laughs> yeah, we we, we 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 actually joke a lot about it because it's like you know, all good producers and composers and so on they can make music. So in a way, music is not difficult to make. You know, as long as you can mm -hmm. play an instrument and has some musical knowledge and uh, good taste and creative mindset, you can create music and. Music is is quite forgiven because you can, you have, it happens over a long period of time, but with these short sonic logos, it's kind of like oh my god, I have to put everything into this little tiny tiny box, all the yeah. information, um, all the emotions, all the expressions, all the associations, um, all that needs to be put into a sound that oftentimes it's one second long um so it's the difference between a novel and a poem <laughs> that's actually a good way to put it <laughs> um, i was always told that when it came to writing mm. that it was way harder to write a short story yeah. or to write a poem mm -hmm. than it was to write a novel no but it's uh it's, it's, so, it's so true when you have when you have more time you can mm -hmm. you can kind of easier get to the destination that you want to to to, yeah. to go to and put in these short sounds and it's so funny because we we often hear from clients you know they kind of they just think ah oh, we just need a, a a a little logo sound it's just you know it's just a little easy pc one you know it's uh and, and it's the hardest thing you're yes, asking for <laughs> it's the hardest thing but they also what's funny is that they, they also discover during the process how important it is and mm -hmm. how um you know how important it is that it actually is the right sound for the brain so they cannot just you know do it with the left hand and just you know we just make this little sound and then uh move on it's like suddenly they they become vulnerable you know because it's like oh my god this sound is is the the representation of our whole company um yeah then they realize that they that they really need to give it much more attention than they first uh, thought. Um, if they don't give it the attention it deserves, they're not going to use it. That's the big problem. That's right? that's that's the whole <laughs> the whole thing. You know, if 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 it's if yeah. it's not done right, then it will definitely not be sustainable, and it will just end up in some drawer after two weeks. And we've seen that uh, a thousand times how these great sounds yeah. are made, and then after a few months a week it's kind of like what what happened it's just disappeared on the other hand when it's done right and it's successful and you know like 
the classic example of McDonald's, um, mm. you know, it's been around for more than 20 years. That evolved over time. It though, evolved, but over but, a really long period. <laughs> yes, but the but the the the, the basic five notes mm -hmm. are completely the same as it was originally. Oh, so, totally. So. But it was a full song, and then it was a chorus. Well, it was a full song sung by Justin Timberlake. Then it was a full song sung by someone else that was not Justin Timberlake. Uh, then it was the chorus, and then it was just the five notes. <laughs> So it, it got boiled down into its essence. I think that's what happened over 20 plus years. Yeah. So it's really interesting how it evolved. Yeah. yeah. But but that little melodic hook uh, mm -hmm. that, that somehow just, you know, really became the symbol of McDonald's. Uh, yeah. And, and what's amazing is that they have used it just consistently for more than 20 years and of course, they mm -hmm. manage to do all these variations and 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 adaptations uh, depending on whatever music is on the on the ad, but but still the the, the core thing is being used consistently consistently for so long. Um, mm -hmm. So that just shows, you know, when you do it right, when you get it right, you have a you have a friend for life um, as a brand. It's instantly recognizable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Memory is so important in all of this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's of course it's it's all it's all a matter of, of exposure and repetition, mm -hmm. and yes. and that leads to uh, what's your media budget, your media spent, how many. Mm. But but I think it's uh, that that's kind of an old school way of looking at it. Um, many of our clients are only B two B companies, so they they're mm -hmm. not even they would never go on TV, for instance. And they would never be known by the public uh, because they they would never go. <laughs> the consumers will never meet them. They only uh, they are only in a business uh, business to business. Um, Those are a lot of my clients. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, exactly, and and they more than anybody, they really are eager to get to create some uh, extra uh, meaning to their brand and. Give it some character and some personality, and um, <laughs> spice things up, and 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 create something that is emotional. So mm -hmm. they, I mean, I think they more than anybody, they are they are really uh, suited for for these things, both when it comes to the right voiceover, the right music, uh, the right sonic logo or whatever, but really having these extra features in their brand palette um, because I think Coca-Cola they they will do just fine and they don't even have like a distinct sonic <laughs> logo they just have some yeah. some characteristics in the way they use sound and music but they have such a huge ad spend that it doesn't really matter I guess <laughs> no no exactly but these these hardcore yeah. uh, you know tech companies or med, med, medical companies or mm -hmm. um, industrial you know it's like they they are really <laughs> desperately looking for ways to to uh, give character and personality to their brands and, and so so and they they will never get that exposure you know and but still they are they are dealing with a lot of people and a lot of clients and a lot of you know people uh, internally uh, in the, within the organization so these mm -hmm. things are not just for external use it's definitely also for for internal uh, yeah. use of the whole brand building uh, internally is I think just as important oh mm. sure yeah the people who work at your company need to be able to know who you are and they need to be able to tell other people who you are so yeah. and they need to understand who you are themselves because then they can do better work so yeah and it's it's also just a matter of 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 of, uh, of liking something you know yeah you, know, you need to to really and and when we do a project, we know if the client or the people we work with, with if they don't really love it, if they really, if, if they don't feel the, if they're not uh, excited about it and passionate about it, then it's a dead end. Because these things are also very much about, you know, the personal uh, persuasiveness and, and how we 
we we talk about it, uh, you know, at the lunch break or at home with uh, our husband or wives or whatever. You know, you need to be excited about the new brand sound you have. Otherwise, it's it's going to be difficult to to uh, you know fight for it uh, afterwards. So, yeah. Yeah. That kind of leads me to another question, though, and I'm curious as to your perspective on this. Do you think there's a difference between the way that Europe approaches audio branding and the difference that North America approaches approaches audio branding? I know mm. that I, I I believe that Europe has been doing it longer than North America, <laughs> but uh, I'm just curious if you think there's a different approach. Uh, in our experience, that there, there is definitely a different approach. Um, I, I mean. And now I'm only speaking of from from personal experience here, so so I don't know, uh, I don't have the the right stats for it. But I think um, what we've seen is that in in, in North America, it's, it's it has definitely been the the ad agency who was the kings uh, in this, and, and everything was like evolved around the ad agency and the creative. You know the Don Drapers of uh, of of creative work, and regardless of you know be it music or uh, visuals or film or whatever, it all uh, comes from from the ad agency. And I think in, in Europe we are a bit more um, branched out, and we are we've been more uh, focused on 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 actual branding, not so much on on campaigns in the same way i think in, in the us it has been very much about um you know the campaigns the next tv ad or so of course it's 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 the same also in europe but but design and branding is as i see it a bit more uh plays a big a bigger role and that's also when we look at at um how many people are doing this type of work in the US compared to Europe. It's um, it's definitely much more um, uh, saturated uh, over here. But having said that, I think it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely a growing trend in the US and that whole um, focus on uh, this, of, of, you know, including sound in brand design and in in uh, UX um, and product design and all that, you know, it's that, that that sound becomes much more uh, 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 an important player here, and not just it's, so. It's not just about putting music on your net next TV ad or your next uh, Super Bowl ad, you know, which of course is great and fantastic and all that. But it's to us, it's not really. It doesn't have anything to do with sonic branding. It's 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 just add music um and that's that has been the the i think the the most important thing in the us you know uh, and the way you put, put all your money and and here we are you know we don't we don't have these big super million dollar global campaign launches uh the, the companies over here they are a bit more f uh flatlined i think and 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 i think and they're a bit more you know playing a bit more safe. Um, so they put just as much focus on how their uh, on hold music on, in the customer service works and uh, and how the design in the app and so on, how is that uh, performing? That plays similar role to, to, to most companies over here. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to ask you one more question because we're getting to mm -hmm. the end here. But I philosophically, I kind of want to get your ideas on this. Why do you think audio is often the last, pe the, the last piece, the last thing that people think about? Why do you think that is? What, what made that happen? <laughs> I mean, we're fixing it. We're doing our best to fix it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But why do you think it happens in the first place? I think there are so many different uh, reasons for that. Uh, when it comes to to production, you know, in a, in a film production, for instance, or a, a TV commercial uh, production, or some kind of campaign, to create something visually requires 
a lot more people. It requires a lot of professions, uh, professionals to meet. You know, you need uh, different crew members and camera and light and copy and actors and producers and uh, art directors and so on. So a lot of people, you know, put all the, 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 the effort into that. And then you can have maybe one guy who's the composer for the music, who delivers the music. Uh, Just one guy. Just one guy. <laughs> and he's probably sitting in a basement. A couple of people running around with microphones. Yeah, totally. So you have, uh, you know, 100 people doing stuff in order to create something that looks fantastic on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have one guy in a basement creating the music. Now I'm, of course, being very uh, stereotypical, uh, but but there's definitely something to it. So so the actual attention or the 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 allocation of budgets, you know, has just been much more uh, leaning towards the visual outputs. So in the in the in the marketing world and and you know where we are sitting right now, I think just the 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 focus is naturally more on visuals, and you can also see it on in in schools, uh, in in um, on different types of educations uh, within branding and design and so on. It's it's definitely you know the percentage that work with with sound design or with music is just super super small compared to to everything else, and that's uh, I guess that's just how it is, and and it's um, that is is understandable. Uh, from a from a more from a rational point of view, you know, I think a lot of it might be. I've I've toyed with this thought for a long mm. time as well, and it, you know, I know that's why you started on mute. That's why I have this mm. podcast because I don't think that that should be the case. Mm. But I I do think that we take it for granted. I think that it's so pervasive in our lives; it's everywhere mm. that we don't give it as much attention as we do other things because it's just everywhere. Mm. We just always expect to have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, it, and it's not tangible. Um, yes. You know, when you see something, you can point at it and you can, you know, say that I like this color or uh, you can, you can kind of touch it and, and, and you can, you can create a shape. You can, you can have a ball, is round and you can feel that it's round and so on, but but sound is is it's just uh, it's it's uh, invisible, so it definitely is also more um, yeah hard, harder to grab onto and we we experience mm -hmm. it a lot you know that we create something some sound for for some product or function or and 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 when we tell people about it they. They suddenly like okay they recognize the sound but then it's like I never thought about it I never it was just there <laughs> um, and it that's that's not necessarily a bad thing because we don't want sounds that um, grabs negative attention you know we want them to just be a natural part of the of the space you're in but it's interesting how these things just we just take them in as as a automatically or intuitively um, and I think it also has something to do with how the brain perceives sound and how it's layered in the brain um, which is definitely um, happening on a, on a much deeper level than how we uh, perceive things uh, visually so we are just we are from the from our birth you know we are just the body is uh, trained to to absorb sound um, much differently than, than than anything else. So, so it's just mm -hmm. yeah, it just it's it's pretty subconscious. It, exactly, yeah. that's the word subconscious. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a part of mm. our lives. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Well, Simon, thank you for creating good sound because we need a lot more of that in our lives. <laughs> so you are, I so appreciate you're what most you do. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> How can people get a hold of you if they want to talk to you about audio branding or sound for their projects or anything like that? Uh, I would always recommend everybody to uh, go to our website, 
which is unmute.dk uh, or unmute.net if you are uh, that kind of a person. It, it, <laughs> Is there a different kind of person for a .dot net? <laughs> uh, we're, we're still we're still trying to figure that out, but uh, I, I guess I guess not. But yeah, our our website is the place to to go, and of course uh, on on LinkedIn and various social channels, um, I should be able to to uh, be reached. Okay. Yeah. Well, wonderful. I will put this all in the show notes as well. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time, Simon. This has been really educational. I've learned a ton. <laughs> well, you're, you're welcome. And uh, thanks for having me on, on the show. Really appreciate it. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time. <laughs>